What's going on everybody, it's Eric Ray with the back here helping you take your game to the next level and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to play lockdown man defense in Madden 18. Now if this is your first time checking out one of my videos and you want to improve your Madden game, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Make sure to hit the bell icon so that you join the notification squad and never miss an upload. So what's going on guys, like I said today I'm going to be showing you how to play lockdown man defense in Madden 18. Now as many of you know man defense for the most part, for most of Madden's existence, has been very bad. This year, man defense is definitely usable, but you have to know how to use it. Now, first and foremost, man is not an every down defense in Madden. You know, real life NFL, cover one is called a good bit of the time in NFLs. Cover ones, cover threes, cover three match, which is essentially, uh, you know, a man defense, depending on the, form the offensive formations alignment. A lot of defenses in the NFL run this on an every down basis. You can't really do that in Madden because there's just too many routes that do a good job at beating man. Man in Madden, or Madden 18 specifically, is very good when you mix it in, though. Uh, if you're calling zone 70 to 80 percent of the time, when you mix man in, you will usually have success locking people up because number one, they're not expecting it. Number two, if you know how to do it right, it can be very hard to get people open, uh, especially when they're expecting zone. So, with any type of man defense, you always want to call a cover one. You don't want to do two man under. You always want to call some type of cover one. And you want to make sure the word press is in the title. So, for example, we'll just look at some examples. You see here, cover one hole press, that's good. Cover one thief press, that's good. Personally, I like calling cover ones where the one of the safeties is in a yellow zone. I feel like it's better that way because uh, they typically have higher zone coverage. So, like here, cover one hole press, you see a middle linebacker is in the yellow zone. But cover one thief press the free safety is in the yellow zone so that's the one I would look to do we'll go here to nickel you see there's another cover one hole press but like I said I like I like cover ones with safeties in the yellow zone so let's look around keep just showing you different examples of different cover one plays you would want to call that might be the only one in nickel normal okay here we go cover one robber press nickel normal that's the one I would call in nickel normal because it has the safety uh, in, in the, in the uh, yellow zone. You're gonna see if you look through formations There will be some cover ones that don't have the word press in the name here dime normal cover one robber press That's good, but I can't find one at the moment But there are some cover ones that don't have the word press in the name You don't ever want to use those so here we'll use dollar for example cover one robber press and dollar just perfect so um, if you're playing regular teams uh, the Broncos are the best team if you want to sprinkle in man defense. The Jags would be the second best team. If you're playing ultimate team, you know, you can get four cornerbacks that have 91 plus man and, and it can be a real problem. So there's two ways that I play man when I call it. So if I'm going up against a compressed set, which gun bunch, you will go up against gun bunch a lot or like shotgun tight, uh, deuce close. If it's any type of compression set, I always want to base line and press. The reason for this is because when you're dealing with compression sets, you have to be able to take away the, out, the, the routes that break to the sideline. When you're dealing with compression sets, you're almost always going to be facing some type of a corner route somewhere, uh, and you want to be able to take those away. Corner routes, C routes, the middle of the field you can take away yourself, like post routes and drags and stuff of that nature. If it's like a more of a regular alignment or a trips alignment, I wouldn't baseline, I would just press, but we're going to cover that in a minute. So. You always want to leave the three receiver hook zone. I did a video on why this is the best zone in the game, uh, especially if you have a 91 zone defender there. You never want to take this off the play because it gets really glitchy. It, it does a really good job at jumping stuff over the middle of the field. You're usually going to have a free defender somewhere. So, for example, we have this blitzer here. We don't need to leave him blitzing. Usually, when, when I run man, I want to have at least one like flat zone or like a, uh, like a curl to flat zone. One of those on the side of the field because... You're going to help take away, like, right here, for example, let's look at Watkins. If Watkins is on a corner route, he's going to be shut down. But if he's on a drag route, he, he's going to have inside leverage. So it's good to have a hard flat on this side of the field because we know, okay, if he's on a drag, you know, this hard flat will take him away once he crosses over here. Or, you know, you, you could take this guy right here and put him in the hard flat and then, you know, put this guy in a, in a vert hook. You typically are going to want to have a hard flat 
on the side of the field where the running back is because usually when a running back goes out on a route he goes into the flat so I try to usually if I have a free defender on that side of the field I put him in a hard flat because that way I don't have to leave the running back manned up because nine times out of ten if the running back goes out on a route he's going to the flat anyway so we'll reset the play here so again if it's compression I base the line and press to take away any type of corner routes and then I'm gonna if, if I put if I put a hard flat on the same side of the field as a running back, I'm not gonna leave the running back manned up because that's useless because now we have you know two things defending the same area. So I'll take this guy instead and maybe put him in a vert hook or something like that. You know, just because I don't need I don't need him playing the hard flat. Or I don't need him playing the linebacker since I already have a hard flat over there. Now, if I leave him manned up on the running back and I put this guy in like a curl flat, then yeah, I'll leave him manned up on the running back because now I'm looking to play more of like if this guy goes to a curl or something like that or a comeback route, this guy can take that away. So you always want to have at least one like flat zone or, or curl flat on that side of the field. And then here, you know, you can just use the safety. I'm, I'm not going to use the safety right here because I'm going to run the offensive play. But what I would do is I would be with the safety kind of just in this area here looking to jump anything uh, that, that possibly would come open. So we're going to hike the play. And you'll see, you see how, what's his name there, uh, Tlaib had like outside leverage on Watkins, I believe Watkins caught it out of bounds, but he, because he has good man coverage, like yeah, like he's, he's he has this outside leverage, so even though, you know, Watkins makes a good cut, Tlaib is right there in his like hip pocket, he's right there, the ball gets thrown, and Tlaib actually gets a bad animation, he should have just went and swatted this, but he kind of got sucked in here, but it didn't matter because Watkins... He didn't get his feet down in bounds because the coverage was so tight. So we're going to uh, set it up again really quickly here. Again, I'm going to just put this guy in a hard flat this time. I'll drop this guy right here because I don't need him covering the running back since I have the hard flat over there. And again, we'll try to hit Watkins. And you'll see, like, Tlaib, he's in his hip pocket again. And again, he gets his hand in there. You, you, don't, you can't throw the corner out early because there is, there's, there's, no, there's no leverage on the outside there. So again... We'll do something like this. Now I'm going to try to throw this C route over here to Woods. And you're going to see it's going to be a similar situation here. Chris Harris, again, he's right in his hip pocket. And Woods might have tapped his toes there, but that's not a safe throw. Uh, like, normally, if it was like a regular type of man defense and, and it, 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 excuse me, maybe the cornerback wasn't as good, uh, you know, you could throw it right when he cuts, but because Chris Harris is right on his back pocket, it's like if you throw it right when he cuts, you're going to get picked off like that because he's in his hip pocket. He doesn't have leverage as soon as he makes his cut. So that's one way uh, to run it. Now, let's audible here to like some more of like a, here we go, this is perfect, like a, like a trips look. So if it's like a trips look or a spread look, I'm not going to baseline in this situation. I'm just going to do a regular press because I don't need to baseline here because I'm going to have these guys up on all the receivers. And again, I like to put a hard flat somewhere on the field. So in this instance here, since my blitzing linebacker is on the left, I'm going to still put him in a hard flat or, or a curl flat to this side of the field because I don't want to take this guy who's manned up on the tight end. I want to leave him manned up. Now, you could take the guy manned up on the running back and also put him in, into a hard flat or a curl flat because, again, uh, you know, if the running back stays in the block, then you're good. You still have this guy going to the flat to take away a drag route but if the running back does go to the flat he's still covered so just for example here let's actually send the running back into the flat he's not manned up as you can see but this is why it's good to have that hard flat out there because he's still there that should have been a pick he's still there to defend it and that's the whole thing that you're trying to do with this is say well I don't need to keep the guy manned up on the running back because if, if, if you put him in a hard flat because the fact that he's in a hard flat is going to say he, he's kind of going to he, he's he serves like two purposes now if the running back stays in the block this guy isn't wasted just sitting in like a QB spy or something he's going to still drop out here and be able to take away any possible drag routes because that's the one thing that that man defense can be vulnerable against is a drag route if you get a good release on a drag it doesn't matter how good your man coverage is if you have a speedy guy that gets a good release the drag's going to be open so it's always good to, to put those hard flats on the outside of the field so in the event that a drag beats you, it's going to run into the hard flat once it gets to the other side of the field. But if your running back still, if they do still send the running back out to the flats, he's still covered by the hard flat as well. So you're not really losing anything by doing that. So again, in this situation, we just run a regular press because there's really, there's no need to base the line versus something that's not compressed. 
And because we're in a play that is pressed, all of these guys are going to they're going to defend their receiver better. I didn't actually even want to throw it to that guy there. I meant to throw it to Y, but I'm going to go to the replay and show you what happens here. So because the word press is in the name, they just they stick to the wide receivers better. It's just one of those weird mad things. So here we'll just look at Connor Cup. I guess that's his name. And this is Roby. Roby's not like a, a great man defender in the game, but he's, he's average. And you're going to see that he sticks with him you know, the whole way, he's right up on him, like, this isn't going to be a safe throw at any point, right here, um, again, you see, this, this defender right here, this is not a good man defender at all, Langley might be his name, I'm not sure, I could be mispronouncing it, he's not a good man defender at all, but he is all the way with him, and this is a really good man beating crossing route in this play, and he gets a good clean release, but because it's a press play, he's going to stick with him all the way, and that is what's so good about man press, cover one man press, is that, especially if you have 91 zone guys, I mean, excuse me, 91 man guys, they're going to stick with the receivers almost the entire way, and here you see the free safety and that three receiver hook, he's just lurking over the middle, so if anything crazy comes over the middle, now here he bites down on the on the running back, it's on like a little delay hook, but he, if you have any type of shallow crossing routes or drags, he's going to jump down on that too, so if you want to play man defense this year, you have to mix it in, you might want to call it once, you know, every you know, every five plays or something like that, you know, unless someone just flat out can't beat it, you know, call it once every five, six plays, sprinkle it in, you always want it to be cover one press, sometimes cover one press with a safety in the yellow zone, if it's a compressed set like bunch, tight, deuce close, tight slots, you want a baseline and press, if it's a, a trip set, a spread set, a double set, you know, something that's more spread out, you want to just do a regular press, no baseline, and you want to put hard flats on the outsides of the field, uh, when necessary always take the guy manned up on the running back put him in a hard flat and if you have another defender a free defender on the other side of the field put him in a hard flat as well because that will stop drag routes to cross over to the other side of the field so just wanted to drop this off to you guys I know a lot of people ask about man defense it definitely is usable this year in the right situations if you use it like this I've had a lot of success with it I've seen other people have success with it so definitely sprinkle it in and see what it can do for you as always if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful just drop a like comment subscribe and I will see you guys next time.